Okay, the title of this lesson is Rearranging Formulae. Keywords, inverse, undo, same to both sides. And those two, the first two keywords, inverse and undo, basically mean the same thing. Uh, to do the inverse of something is to undo it. So, for example, if you add, say, 5 to something, the inverse, or to undo it, is to subtract 5. If you multiply something by 5, the inverse, or to undo it, is to divide by 5. And the second one, same to both sides. I'll explain that as I go into the examples. Uh, the outcomes for this lesson are you'll be able to rearrange formulae to express in terms of any given subject. Okay, so, let's move that up there and out of the way a little bit. Okay. Um... I'll start with this sort of straightforward little example and we'll build up to some slightly more challenging ones. Okay, here's example number one and it's 5y plus p equals, let's put a number in there, say 7. Okay, now in this example I want to make y the subject, so I'll write that at the top there. Which is slightly different there. Y. Make y the subject. So, first thing I notice about this is I've got a left hand side of this formula and a right hand side. And the left and right hand side are separated by this thing in the middle called an equal sign. And because it's an equal sign, it means whatever the value of the expression on the left, it is equal to the value on the right, which is 7. And to keep that equal sign true, to keep it balanced, to keep the uh, uh, formula balance, whatever I do to one side of it, I've got to do to the other. That's where this same to both sides comes in. For example, if I subtract one from this side, I've also got to subtract one from that side. Basic principle of keeping things balanced. Okay, Otherwise, the equal sign will no longer be true. If I take one away from there, if I don't take it away from there, it will no longer be equal. Okay, now I want to make y the subject. So the y is there, and it's 5y, which is 5 times y, plus p. So the y is being multiplied by 5, and then p is being added to it. Now, I want to end up with uh, a formula that says y equals, this is just the y on its own. So I've got to get rid of all the other things that are around it. I've got to undo all of those things. But in the process of undoing them, or doing the inverse, I've got to make sure that I do the same to both sides to keep it equal. So, always a good idea to undo or do the inverse of the thing that's being added or subtracted first and then dealing with the thing that multiplied. Just keeps it nice and simple. You could do it the other way around, but this is actually um, a bit easier. So, plus p, uh, if I subtract p, I can see that if I subtract p, that p will be gone, because p minus p will get rid of that p, so I'll just be left with a 5y. Brilliant. However, whatever I do to the left-hand side, I must also do to the right-hand side, same to both sides. So this side, I've got to do 7 minus p. So my equation, or my formula, has now become from 5y plus p equals 7 to 5y equals 7 minus p. Subtracted p from both sides. Okay, now the y is nearly there, just being multiplied by 5. So to undo that, I'm going to divide by 5. So if I divide both sides by 5, uh, I'll show you what that would look like. 5y divide by 5, divide that side by 5, equals sign directly underneath each other and I've got to do the same to the other side in order to keep that balance. Now, 7 minus p over 5 stays as it is because I don't know the value of p. So there's no change going to happen there. However, on this side, 5 divided by 5 is 1. 1 y. Just 1 y left over. And there is my rearranged formula to make y the subject. Okay, a little straightforward little example there. So using those keywords, inverse, undo, undoing what's done, and whatever you do, do the same to both sides. It's basically about going from that step there to that step there where the y is on its own. And all that little, the trimmings, if you like, being multiplied by 5 and added to by p, is all eliminated and gone. And we've gone, gone and gotten rid, rid of that uh, in a step-by-step -step process in a logical fashion. And you can see equal signs directly underneath each other. Left-hand side of the formula always stays on the left. Right-hand side stays on the right. You can clearly see what's been done there. Okay, slightly more challenging example. Okay, uh, let's call this number 2, and in this one we're going to make x the subject, okay, and let's have a equals 2x squared plus 5, okay, right. Now, 
this is quite a bit more challenging. But the same principles apply. Same to both sides and undoing what's done to that x to get it on its own. So the equal sign directly underneath. I can see it says 2x squared plus 5. So the x is being squared, then multiplied by 2, and then 5 is added to it. Good idea always, as I said before, to eliminate the additional subtraction first. So if, if I subtract 5, I can get rid of that. So if I subtract 5 from both sides, I'll go to, to the left side as well, same to both sides, and that just leaves me with 2x squared because 5 minus 5 is nothing. Gone. And the same terms on both sides leaves me with a minus 5 on the other side. Right, brilliant so far. And a good idea to get rid of that 2 times. So times by 2, the inverse is divide by 2 to undo it. The opposite, if you like. Uh, sorry, I meant to write divide by uh, 2 there, but divide by 5. Okay, let's go back to that. Divide by 2. Okay. So on this side, 2x squared divide by 2 will look like that. On that side, a minus 5 divided by 2 will look like that. And I can't do any more to simplify that expression because I don't know the value of a. However, on this side, 2 divided by 2 is 1. That just leaves me with 1x squared on that side. And this side remains, that's supposed to be an a there, as is. OK, now the final thing, let's take this page down a little bit, is to remove or to undo that square. And the undoing of squaring something is to square root it. So if I square root both sides, it will look like, I'll take a bit more space here, take it down a little bit. I'm doing this extra step, you may not want to do this every time, just to show you what it looks like. If I square root that side, it'll look like that. Square root this side, it'll look like that. Now, that I can't do any more with. But this, the undoing of a square is a square root, as I said before, it cancels each other out. So the square root cancels out the square, leaving me with just x on that side, and that would stay as it is. Now I've done that extra little step from there to there. You probably would normally go from straight from there to there, because you can see the undoing of squared is to square root it, so that eliminates that square straight to there. But I've just shown you that the square root and the square eliminates each other. OK, right, uh, a much more challenging example now. Let's call this example number 3. a equals pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Right, we're going to make for this h the subject. OK, so make, let's write it up here, h the subject. Okay, so the h is over there. It's being multiplied by 2 pi r, so it's 2 times pi times r, which is the same as 2 pi r times h. I could put the time sign anywhere we like there, we could say 2 times pi r h, or 2 pi times r h, or 2 pi r times h. Let's group this together, 2 pi r. So it's being multiplied by 2 pi r, and it's being added to by pi r squared. So let's get rid of the thing that's being added to first, subtract that. So that's 2 pi r squared plus, so let's subtract pi r squared from both sides. So if I subtract it from both sides, on the left-hand side, it'll look like that, minus pi r squared. And on this side, pi r squared minus pi r squared leaves me just with 2 pi r h. OK, I've removed or eliminated that from that side of the equation, uh, of the formula. Right, um, next step would be to undo or to remove, eliminate 2 pi r. And it's being multiplied. It's 2 pi r times h. So if I divide both sides by 2 pi r in one step, and I'll show you what that looks like. 2 pi r h divided by 2 pi r. Now on this side, I've got to do the same because I've got to do the same to both sides. It looks like that. And that I can't do much else with at the moment. And I don't really want to, to be honest with you, because all I want to do is end up just with a h on the other side. 2 pi r divided by 2 pi r is 1. That leads to me with h equals a minus pi r squared all over 2 pi r. OK. So a quick recap. We said we were going to look at arranging. Oops, gone a bit too far up there. Arranging formulae 
or rearranging formula rather, keywords were inverse and undo, same to both sides, and the outcome was that you would be able to rearrange formulae to express in terms of any subject. And that's the end of the lesson.